let's say uh, 0 0.1 and uh, I mean Windows users will be familiar with this just from that uh, from the executive prompt hit ping space IP address etc it'll do that there's obviously a lot of other things you can do with it but uh, success rate was 100% you can see that it can ping itself uh, you should be all set now let's say R2 we're gonna put that at dot two, so we bump in, and I named that bottom branch, and can't type, and IP, oh wait, first we have to go into interface FA, zero slash one maybe, let's double check to make sure, yep, zero one is right, and then we'll do an IP add of 192.168.0.2. And what did we forget? As usual, the subnet mask. All right, now, there we go. And then do a no shut. And you notice it gives an incomplete command here. Obviously, we're just missing a piece. So, Cisco can be very cryptic at times, but other times it's actually decently helpful. So, and then there's the uh, log coming up, just saying, Interface FA01 change state to up because we did issue no shut to that. And uh, now we should be able to control Z and uh, do a ping 192.168.0.1. There we go. Just took well, the first time, took a little second. Just had to uh, get everything up and running. But uh, it should be all set now if we issue that command again. Boom. 5 out of 5. So. So now we have connectivity between those two. Simple, basic connectivity. Um, now obviously we can go on to add, say, let's make this 172.16.0.0 slash 24. And this will be dot one again. This will be Dot two, and let's get this last one. Let's do this one and two. Dot one six eight. Dot one dot zero slash thirty. Do that, and we'll make this dot one. This dot two. All right, to speed this up. What I've done is I've added um, added the IPs to all of these, these four right here. We're going to save these two. Uh, we're going to do those together. Um, and with these, I changed the host names on them in GNS3. They already had a change in Cisco, but just so it's easier for us to see, what you can easily do is right click and then change the host name. However, the router must be turned off to change the host name. If you change it while it's turned on, it will dump and turn off. Um, and then you have to start it back up again. And uh, if you don't have the correct startup config, it won't work. Um, now, on a note here, um, if you do a file save, sometimes I can't find the option, but uh, it should usually. There we go. No, it's, yep, it's saving the configurations. But uh, what I had to do right now is I had to export, click on this little button right here, and extract to a directory and extract them all to a directory and then manually add the whole path um, on here for it to uh, start up again with the right uh, config. However that should be all set um, and we are now going to configure right branch and bottom branch. Um, they are both FA00, which you can check by hovering over this, or hovering over this right here, actually, which will show FA00 FA00. So, let's start out with the right branch, which is going to be 1.1 slash 30. And so what we're going to do is go enable your terminal, interface FA0 slash 0. We're going to do an IP add of 192.168.1.1.255.255.255.252 since this is a slash 30. Again, a no shut and 
that's the only difference. And then that'll pop up with the logs. And then for the bottom branch, we're going to do enable comp t interface fa0 slash 0 p add. 192.168.1.2.255.255.255.252. Doing no shut for that. And then um, we're in the configuration for configuration configuring interfaces. However, if we wanted to do a ping, we could do a do. Do in front of it will allow you to do a ping from um, the configuration terminal. So you do a do, you can run any command that would run an executive by doing a do in front of it. So you would do a do ping 192.168.1.1 and oh, well, there we go. And we're all set. So those two are able to communicate. Now, make sure you that you've tested everything and ping each other. Well, let me rephrase. This left branch should be able to ping this thing in the right branch. Um, because, but they should all be able to ping those close interfaces. However, they will not be able to ping anything outside. Well, let me rephrase that. The bottom branch, if you say ping this, it will ping this, but it's because it's going from this interface. Let me show you a few of the advanced ping options so that we can uh, show you exactly what I mean. Let's take the bottom branch and say we want to ping this one right here. However, we want to see, well, is it pinging from this interface or this interface? Well, Default is this interface, but you can force it to ping from this interface. Let's see how that works. Now, we're going to do a ping and then hit enter. That's it. Now, protocol, you can choose different protocols, IP obviously. Target IP address is going to be 192.168.1.1. Hit enter. Repeat count, that's how many times it's going to ping. 5, datagram size 100, timeout in seconds, 2 seconds, extended commands, we're going to hit yes, source, address, or interface. Now you can, I believe you can do either FA0 slash 1, or you can do 192.168.0.2, I believe, let's double check, 0 0.2, alright, good. So we're going to ping 1.1, 0 0.2. This should fail. And as you can see, it's failing. So, um, that will show you that you cannot ping across that unless there's a static route or there's routing enabled. Um, as you can see, if we do a regular ping of 192.168.1.1, works just fine. Um, <clears throat> So, that routing, routing between all three of these branches will be covered in a later tutorial. I'm going to cover a few more basic commands um, to get you up and running here. So, you noticed how the logs were coming in um, and sort of interrupting us when we were typing. So, now, conf t will enter configuration mode. We can get rid of that. Well, we can't, well, not get rid of it, but uh, it'll automatically hit enter for you and go to the next line. So, you do a conf t and then you um, interface or sorry, line con zero. Now you're configuring the line quote unquote which is pretty much anything that deals with um, the line that, um, that you're working with. Um, line con stands for line console so Technically, I'm consoled into this. Um, you'll notice if you can see that on top, it says console port. Um, technically, if uh, I had a physical Cisco router, I would take uh, take a little uh, console cable, connect it to the to the router, and you know, this would this is what I would pull up using PuTTY or uh, HyperTerm, PowerTerm. There's a lot of different ways to connect, and um, Essentially, you can change a lot of the different things here. Now, um, what we're going to do is do logging syn, which is short for synchronous, and hit enter, and that'll uh, have it so that the logs will automatically hit enter um, if you're typing anything, so it won't space it all out. 